called a guillotine? The science and the technology transparent to people, like in the history of chocolate, that's all been sort of locked away. Behind the veil. For reason, right? We're really all about transparency. Really simple and approachable on the outside, but also the deeper you get into it, this deeper, deeper knowledge you can keep on going at. Hedonics. The root term is, you know, heathen, you know, so it's basically... Like hedonism? Yeah. The sensual experience of chocolate. Chocolate becomes a control system. The whole chocolate itself is just a platform for our other plans, right? Welcome to Boing Boing TV. I'm Shani Jardin, and with me is David Peskovitz and Timothy Childs, the founder of Cho Chocolate. And that's what I have in my hands, and it is delicious. That's mm. what I have in my mouth. Mm. And that's what I just made. This is really incredible chocolate. I'm a huge fan. Tell us how it's made, or better yet, show us how it's made. Let's sure, go inside the lab. You want to go? Yeah. Come on. A lot of people don't realize that chocolate actually grows on trees, right? So it grows on a pod. I mean, it really does look like a funky alien it's fruit. Totally and that, tra that, transpermia. That, that doesn't look like Switzerland to me. It sure <laughs> does it. And so, actually, 90% of the cacao uh, grown in the world is done by small family farms. And so basically, it's this really weird, strange fruit that actually buds right on the trunks and the limbs of trees. And it starts with this tiny little flower, like here. Chocolate grows plus or minus, roughly, t plus or minus 10 degrees above and below the uh, equator. And it's not because it's just the climbs, but it's actually because the pollinators that pollinate this particular tree can only live in that range, right? So that's why, you know, we have to go in a whole different continent to get our raw materials. So this is the same pod right here, split in half, and you can see this cool radial geometric pattern, yeah? All of them have it. When you break these things apart, the seeds actually in this conical, helical spiral up, and there's geometries all through this stuff. And so a lot of people talk about, you know, bean to bar. Yeah. And so I try to expand a little bit and call it pod to palette because, you know, it's really, it's really important to actually think about the experience all the way through. It's actually, what's that whole hedonic experience like for the customer? Oh, right. what was that? What hedonics. Was that? Hedonics is just a technical term for that whole experience of eating chocolate or any kind of food. So any food, any food is, you know, in that, that whole process of looking, eating, consuming, feeling good or whatever afterwards, that's the whole hedonic profile. After we cut the, the, the pods from the trees, actually use little snippers, um, the, the folks are actually, um, this is actually a secret research station in Ecuador right here, they actually take a machete, cut the pods in half, scoop out all the goop. These beans here, you can see they're starting to get brown a little bit already, but this is white how it comes out. It's so ready to go. It's got so much juices, and sugars and stuff, it's ready to blow. And so what you want to do next is, so this is, this is pretty much harvesting, and then from here you want to uh, um, a ferment. Fermentation is the key for flavor development. Why is that? Because what happens is, is, is if you don't ferment the, the beans well, you actually have a lot of acids and a lot of kind of the bitter flavors and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't recognize this even in the chocolate business. And so what we're trying to do, part of our whole cho, cho source thing, is try to help farmers actually learn how to ferment better. And so what we're doing here is this is a test facility that we're working with uh, some producer pals of ours in, in Ecuador specifically to come up with different sized boxes. We're actually putting temperature probes in here to, to see at, at what stage do they get to the right temperature, what do we do to affect that. Right? Our trick is just to find um, where loops don't exist, put them in place and tighten them up. And that's what we do down here in the field, right? A lot of people that grow cacao have never tasted chocolate from their own beans, mm -hmm. right? Is that just, it's like, huh? And that doesn't make any sense. Um, so, um, so that's one of the things we try to do is we help people learn to ferment better as well as we teach them how to make chocolate. We, and we use the same stuff we use here in the lab. These, these juicy little kind of foamy looking fruits yeah. out uh, and then they've been fermented. We scoop them uh, out. Yeah. Scoop them out. They've been fermented over time. And then ne what happens? Next we dry them. Okay, so that's the second thing about really great flavor development of beans. This is how uh, uh, chocolate's uh, traditionally dried and it's on concrete, which is not good for the following reasons. When it's actually drying, it's kind of outgassing, you know, what's called volatiles in the business. And when they outgas, it reflects right back into the bean, which sucks, right? So you got to do it on. Uh, bamboo is usually the best thing to do. My partner and the folks in Ecuador have come up with these really relatively cheap drying platforms that kind of have a piece of plastic that come, comes down on it. So 
it only took us a couple weeks of development, it cost about 80 bucks each, right? So what's really amazing with a small investment, we can really change the quality of the flavors. What we're using is some basic technology. We're just using, we're gonna be using off the shelf like USB sensors. Right, just for humidity and temperature and pH and all this kind of stuff. That so you have knowledge about the environment. No, but more, more specifically, we're, we'll come up with models with actually how to ferment well, and so we can use these models to help folks, you know, farmers learn to you know ferment all the way through. Because we can take a good bean and make it really great by proper fermentation and drying. And we can take a great bean and really make it really spectacular. These are from Peru, right? They look like, sort of like almonds or something. Yeah, you smell them, you know, you can give them a squeeze. You give them a squeeze and you can feel there's a slight sponginess to it. If you suck on one, does it taste like chocolate? Uh, it tastes pretty crappy. So this is called a guillotine, and basically what it is, it's, it's called a guillotine? A guillotine, wow. for, appropriately called, right? We use these to um, cut a whole bunch of beans at one time. We do 50 at a time, but when we be do bean tests, we do uh, 100. We'll have to do a whole bunch of these. So this is how we first uh, get the beans. So that's what we do here in the lab, is we use the lab that's gonna first gonna do, it's called organoliptics. It's the, you think about the word is organoliptics. And so we basically measure the, the certain criteria about the beans, like the fat content, the uh, level of uh, uh, fermentation, all sorts of, here, I'll give you the honors. Go ahead and push it all the way down. Always wanted to do, do this. It, do it hard. All right. Oops. Oh, these are really nice. These are very well fermented. So basically, uh, what we're doing is I, you know, we do a cut test to see, you know, what's the level of fermentation. See this photograph here. Here's a really great cut test. See the purples here and the browns here. Right. Very well fermented, and these are partially fermented, and these are under fermented or slaty. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to taste some beans here. I'm going to take this bean, and we're going to eat this raw bean. Okay. I washed my hands, so I'm okay. So try that. It's kind of a blonde color. Yeah, it is. It shows it's got some uh, natural criollo. There's three main types of beans, criollo, forstero, the trinitario. It tastes good, but not quite like chocolate. No, it's kind of got a little acid to it, right? It tastes like nutty or almondy. Nutty, yeah. Yep. Nutty, yep. And, and then, wait, but now that it's been in my mouth for a while, the flavor starts yep. to change. Now it tastes a little fruity. Okay, now, yeah, exactly. Here it comes. So that's, yep. that's the basis of my fruity beans, right? So it's inherent quality of the beans is what all we try to do is we extract that. Mm -hmm. So here, try a piece of that, and it's gonna taste yucky. <laughs> we taste something that tastes bad. Yeah. Yeah, not quite so good. Okay. Yeah, it's just big difference, right? Same beans, same farm, same everything, but just slightly under fermented. The steps are we roast the beans and then we crack them. And we'll show we'll go through that for you if you want. Uh, we crack them and then we winnow them, which is actually separating the, the bean meat with the shell. And from that, we, um, those are called nibs at that point. And then we grind them down into a paste. And then if we want to make chocolate out of it, then we, that's when we add the sugar and the vanillas and stuff. And then we refine that all the way down into um, something that's like on the you know, 16 micron level of fineness and stuff. So.